Gaijin Entertainment presents The Shooting Range You are watching The Shooting Range, a weekly show for all tankers and airmen of War Thunder. In this episode, the new king of the beasts, the Tiger II HSLA-16. The beauty and dangers of the Frozen Pass. Hotline, the developers answer questions that you left in the comments. But first, let's start with an introduction to dive bombing. Most fighter bombers and bombers, of course, are equipped with a special bomb site that makes it easier to unleash some explosive fury on enemy vehicles. But what if your aircraft doesn't have one? Well, you have to learn how to dive bomb. Dive bombing became a favorite tactic after World War I. New planes were faster and more powerful than before. Sounds good, right? But when it comes to bombing, it is not always a good thing. Approaching a target at great speed reduces your drop window. That basically means that you have less time to aim, which naturally doesn't improve the accuracy of bombing. And just think about it. It was never easy to hit a small or a moving target in the first place. The solution to the problem was to dive bomb. It works like this. Let's load the test flight for a, let's say, BF-109G6 equipped with a 250 kilogram bomb. First, we gain some altitude and locate a target. Then, dive at a steep angle keep the gun sight on the enemy. We recommend that when you reach 3 to 400 meters from the target, you should start to pull up and when it goes under your nose, drop the bomb. Then you won't get caught in the explosion and we'll have enough time to pull up. As you see, the idea is quite simple. You get the benefit of actually seeing your target and the steeper the dive, the less the bomb deviates and the more accurate the drop is. Remember though, that you still have to pull out, so don't overdo it. A few more things to consider. First, try to use a 2-3 to three second fuse. This way, you won't have to worry about getting blown up by your own bomb. And an enemy still won't have enough time to change position. Second, if your target is a moving vehicle, try to approach it in the same direction it is currently traveling. If, for some reason, it is impossible, don't forget to account for factors like target speed and the kind of terrain it is passing through. If you enjoy bombing runs at ultra-low altitudes, consider using the assault fuse. It will certainly come in handy. Dive bombing is actually not that difficult to master and only requires you to practice a little to get a feel for it. Test flight is a good place to start. A custom mission with a couple of friends is even better. One last piece of advice. If you're just starting, practice on a plane with centerline mounted munitions. It's a bit easier this way. And now we're gonna take a ride in one of the nicest premium vehicles in the game. When you get to the top vehicle rank, it takes a lot of time and effort to get a new machine. An easy solution is to purchase a premium vehicle that provides bonuses to both research points and silver lines. And if the premium of your choice is also an upgraded version of a regular vehicle, that's even better. Today we're discussing a tank that falls exactly into this category, the Premium King Tiger. The Tiger IIH SLA-16 is distinguished from the basic Koenigstiger by two major improvements. The first and the most important one is a new powerful engine. While remarkably agile for such a heavy vehicle, the original tank was not very mobile. But now these struggles are over. The modified Tiger II can move swiftly in and out of cover and cross obstacles without any problems. The second improvement comes in the form of additional turret armor, tracks that act as spaced armor. And yeah, there's also an extra AA machine gun. We're not saying that you can reliably use it to actually down enemy planes, but it is nice to have nonetheless. The tank makes it much easier to grant rank 4 and 5 vehicles. True, it's not the best pick when you have to face the T-54 or basically anything with proper heat rounds. But at BR of 5.7270, this modified heavy is the true king of the jungle. A great 88mm gun, coupled with improved overall mobility, plus extra turret armor. It's a deadly combo. The tracks protect you from unexpected attacks from the side, and you can wiggle your turret to bounce shots down. You're not invulnerable, though, so your best bet is to take well-calculated shots while constantly changing position. Thanks to the new engine, some good old shoot and scoot is in order, which can be used with devastating results. 
And now, we go to the Alps. Not the friendly skiing paradise of today, but the frozen hell that claimed thousands of lives. Frozen Pass is a very special winter map. First off, it is very small, and it is an ideal place for some fast-paced action. Here you can find yourself in a fight within the first 20 seconds of the match. The map consists of three locations. In the west, you'll find a railroad and a deserted tunnel, which is the main battleground in the area. The only cover can be found behind a couple of overturned train cars. Take care not to trick Lin. If you want to push, grab a few buddies. If you're playing solo or just do not like to rely on others, it might be a better idea to take the alternate route, around the mountain. There you will probably run into a like-minded opponent, but if you prevail, you'll be in a great spot to attack the enemy team in the flank. They will have to pass you on their way to the tunnel. The center of the map is basically just big boulders lying around and a couple of small villages on the opposite side of the road. The control point is right in the middle. It is a very dangerous area to be in. There's very little cover within the point and lots of hiding spots around it, which can be and usually are occupied by sneaky SPGs. They will probably score some frags, but you can easily get back at them by mounting a surprise attack at their rear through one of the villages. And finally, we get to the east side of the map. It can be described in just two words, sheer hell. Both teams have to cross open country to get to a small settlement, which then promptly turns into a killing ground, a desperate fight for supremacy. Strategic players try to go around the opponents through the forest, and in most cases that's where they're sent back to their hangar. But the main problem is that once you go down, it is almost impossible to retake the position. There are no safe approaches. And if you do lose the point, the enemy tanks are very likely to advance right up to your spawn. All in all is our favorite winter map. You always have to be on the move. The matches are short, brutal and exciting. The center and the east regions of the map are the undisputed domain of medium and light tanks. Heavy tanks reign supreme in the tunnel CQC. If you're a devout SPG driver, sorry, you're in for some hard times. The opponent will constantly harass your rear and flanks. And now, let's leave the frozen battlefield. Get ready for the traditional part of our show, Hotline. Developers answering questions from the comments. Strictly speaking, it's not the most serious-minded section of the show. If you want answers to be given with solemn faces, feel free to appeal to the official forums. Here we'll have more a light-hearted discussion of the big questions of War Thunder. We'll hope you like it. Crazy Giant Boss writes, Will there be Dutch planes in the game like the Fokker G1 or the D Shell D S21? Yes, we will certainly introduce some of them at some point in the future. Many of those are iconic aircraft, after all. Another one from Rick and Stark. Will you add PTAB bombs? Firstly, we're glad to hear that the Starks are interested in War Thunder, especially as winter is on its way. Secondly, yeah, we are thinking about it. But first we have to make sure that all other sides have their own alternatives or some other countermeasures. Then we will implement them all at the same time. A guy called Dion Kamburov asks, Will we get different sights or optics for different tanks? Yes, you will, but it is going to be an optional thing that you can freely toggle on and off, so it's not high on our priority list. Then a question from Lander Grulik. Will planes or tanks move faster after more ammo, not just bombs, are shot? That's actually how it works in the game. Everything is taken into account. Fuel, ammunition, bombs, everything. Finally, a question from Bobby Bill. I need help! All I play is American tanks and while I'm playing I drink coke and listen to Elvis and Hank Jr. And I don't achieve American bias, what more can I do? Clearly, not enough eagles and freedom, Bill. Throw in some apple pie and baseball while you're at it. That's it for the day, but feel free to write your questions in the comments below. We do read them all, and you might see some of them answered in the next episode. See you on the shooting range!